fan things that you do daily or yeah so what was the most uh, surprising thing that you saw when you get there so like what was the biggest culture shock to you how hard it is to get around without a car because you know in jamaica we have a lot of options you know with taxis coast of bus jtc all of that <laughs> here is either uber or lyft and that can get a little pricey sometimes having to pay sometimes your uber rides can go up to 60 dollars 80 dollars 100 dollars and that's a lot of money to be spending on one ride so it depends on how far you're going so just how hard it is to get around in florida without a vehicle i do have a close friend though who um is willing to take me anywhere I need to go. And my roommates as well, they offer to take me places as well. Mm-hmm. So bicycles. So I would ride um to campus some days. Some days they will bring me and so on. But that was a big shock because they do have buses but there is it's not like them run real spacey and iffy and I have a system where you can look, but most times, the times of the bus don't coincide with my class times. So I'm, you know, I have to get to class for the time my class starts. I can't be late. So I can't sit around waiting for the buses. So, all right, let's talk about cost of living now. Because in, I, I want to say, in, yeah, inflation is happening because of the whole war and everything and COVID. And I know the US push a whole lot of money into the economy during COVID and now they kind of easing out. What is the cost of living like there compared to Jamaica? Well, for starters, we do have a difference in our economies, Jamaica versus the U.S. Yeah. U.S. has a much better economy than Jamaica. Um, I know inflation is happening in Jamaica now, so I can't speak for current mm-hmm. um, living in Jamaica. But in terms of what I was used to before leaving, I would say it's easier living here than in Jamaica for sure because you're earning more and food is not as expensive as it is in Jamaica. Yeah, it's really not. It, it does add up, but um, yeah, so the money that I work, I use it for like food and stuff and my family support me all the other ways and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go into the atmosphere now in the u.s because it's a bit tense over there with everything that's going on every other week is a mass shooting like how how safe do you feel in the u.s compared to jamaica you know the funny thing is even though all these things are happening it still feels like it's far away because it's not in the state because you know the u.s is big mm-hmm. it's much bigger than jamaica is it's not like you know all this all the states are close you know it takes hours to get across the state let alone into another state so it does feel like even though these things are happening in the country it feels far away um so in general general safety though i don't have to i don't feel like i have to worry about my safety much where i am i mean you hear about one or two like i've heard of a shooting like two or three weeks ago, like, my friend's cousin was shot. But it was more so a personal dispute. It wasn't like a rubber going around or a gunman going around. It was two men having an mm-hmm. argument. So I'm more cautious when it comes to how I interact with other people. But when it comes to going about my business and going about my day, I don't necessarily feel like I am not safe. I didn't realize how different... You see, I think that when you leave your country and you come back, you always see the small things that you never see before. Because certain things I never used to pay attention to in Jamaica. I haven't had the chance to come back since I left. So I haven't had the experience yet. Almost a year and I don't come back yet. Imagine that. Because I had to work over the summer because I'm an orientation leader. So new students are coming in. Wow. So I had to, Yeah. Exciting. I had to work throughout the summer because the new students are coming in. I had to facilitate orientation for them. So that's why I couldn't get to come back home. And in Christmas, my family came over here to Florida. So I was like, why are you coming over here? I want to go over there. So I haven't been able to visit home yet. But I'm looking forward to it. Just for the food, though. Not for nothing else. <laughs> okay, good. So, you're in Tampa. Have you been outside of Tampa, outside of Florida? Since coming here for school? Mm-hmm. 
in general, I have traveled outside of the U.S. Not the U.S. I have traveled outside of Florida before coming here for school. Um, but since coming here for school, I've only traveled within the state. Mm -hmm. So I have family at different points in Florida. So I've gone to Orlando. I've gone to Fort Lauderdale. Those are the two main places that I do go to because I have family in those areas. But I haven't gone outside the state yet. Okay. So right now, I'm not seeing family. It's good. It's good when you have family around because family co costs. You get that extra help when you need it if you have good family and. It looks like you have really good family around you, so that is wonderful. I really do. I love my family. That's one reason why I chose Florida too, because I had a lot of family here. Because my second option, um, besides USF, as I said earlier, was Howard, and there were several reasons why I chose US chose USF over Howard. It wasn't just tuition. I mean, there was a tuition difference, but when you look at it, it wasn't like that vast. Like if I, if there were other factors that you know made me choose that wouldn't make me want to go to Howard I would have but um family was definitely a big role because in Washington um where Howard is I would have to you know fly far away to see my family over breaks and then it gets cold and all that so yeah I never you know where you would want to drive to a family member close by you can't do that yeah it's far away so yeah that was one thing to family. Okay, good. Nice. Is the Jamaican community big at USF? Because I know the Jamaican community is huge at Howard. I know that. <laughs> it's not big, but yeah. you know how Jamaicans are. When we see each other, we stick together. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's big in terms of the um, how I interact with them because I see them all the time. So it's big to me. Because we're not spread out, so I'm not interacting with, like, everybody. I interact with them mostly. Mm -hmm. So in that in that case, yeah. But compared to the entire university body, it's a small percentage of us. So let's talk about you and your personal growth from you being in Jamaica and going to the U.S. How, I know COVID and everything delayed you for a year, but how you see yourself grow from this whole situation the whole experience that you had with getting your visa going there experiencing new cultures meeting new people how have you grown i feel like definitely i've gained a lot more independence mm -hmm. i mean of course in jamaica of course you know i live with my family and that but when it comes to more personal stuff i was independent but you know i lived with them they fed me, you know, my, my mommy cooked dinner, you know, and she cooked breakfast. I mean, I would cook breakfast sometimes, but yeah, my mom is cooking for me. So I definitely learned how to be more independent. I don't cook much, but I can cook. And whenever I do cook, people always eat my food and they say it's good. Not so brag, but <laughs> um, I'm able to support myself in that way. I Anything I need, I don't have to call my mother and ask her how to do it. Because, you know, she made sure I was prepared before I left. So I'm able to cook, take care of business. Like, if I have fees to pay, I pay them. Yeah. Stuff like that. So I'm way more independent financially as well. Even though my, my family still give me money. When I was in Jamaica, I would have to depend on my mother. Like, even with going to um, high school, my mother would pay my school fees, stuff like that. No, my mother just put the money in my account and I, you know, go through the whole thing. I use the card and I pay. So I'm much more independent when it comes to doing things on my own, even if it's not my own times. I do the stuff on my own. I paid my insurance the other day. I sign up for it, stuff like that. So, yeah, I would definitely say I'm way more independent now. And I feel like I can buy my house now. Buy my house on my car. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the money, but if I get the money, I could do it. That's good. I wouldn't feel like I'm not prepared. I'm very prepared to live the adult life. Okay. That is great because some people, you know, when they leave and they come back, it's like you're looking at the same person and it's like, where is your growth? Where is your development? <laughs> so I'm glad that you're having that experience and it's good to have that experience. Final two to three questions now. How do you deal with homesickness? When you're homesick, how do you deal with it? When it comes to being homesick, so I do, we do have Jamaican restaurants over here, you know, 
people called Golden Cross, and there are some more local Jamaican restaurants. And I have had some that's actually good. I mean, it's nothing compared to normal food. Like, it's nothing mm-hmm. compared to whole meals. But it's close enough. It's yeah. better than what the Americans are feeding me. So if I do feel like I want some Jamaican food, I order Jamaican food from a Jamaican restaurant. And if I go to the Jamaican restaurant and they twang me behind the cash register, I'm not buying from them. I have to hear the pop, I have to hear the accents. Because, or at least, if I have to know that is Jamaicans cooking my food. Like when you go to a Jamaican restaurant and you hear Jamaicans in there, and you hear that you're dealing with Jamaican food, you, you know, you feel more confident to know, say, Jamaican food will be authentic. So thankfully, the restaurants that I have gone to so far, um, Jamaicans do work there, and Jamaicans cook the food, and I kind of feel like I'm at home, because I went to go in Crystal the other day, and this man, the Jamaican man was there, and offers all the people who work there. The Jamaican man was like, beg your money, no? you can't take the person out of Jamaica, but you can't take the Jamaican out of there. Final question now is, how would you describe studying abroad in five words to encourage someone who is maybe looking at it to give them that solid, that push now to say, you know what, I should do it. So describe it in five words. Five words? Mm-hmm. I kind of say like a because one of my one of my phrases would be worth it. Yeah. Because even though you go through um stress and them something to better get there, at the end of the day you're getting your education. Yeah. And you're growing as a person. So it's definitely worth it. Those are two words, but it's worth it. Mm-hmm. It's definitely different. You will have um culture shock depending on where you go though, because some places Jamaicans are more than others. Um Florida spot for Jamaicans and New York. However, I'm in Tampa, so that's more the northern, eastern side, western, northwest section of the country, not the country, the state. So there are Jamaicans there, but not as much as there would be in Miami or Fort Lauderdale. So definitely it's a different experience. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard. Prepare for some battles because as I said, with the whole moving in, how they gave my room away, um, I never said this earlier, but the person who they gave my room away was too was Caucasian. So how the situation actually worked is the devil. So the girl was actually a previous resident and she requested the room. And I guess they forgot to honor her request before assigning me to the room. So what they did was they she didn't want my particular room. My room is here. The other room is here. She wanted this room. So what they did was they took the white girl who was originally assigned to that room and put her in my room and then give that girl that room. So they went the extra mile to take me out because they could have take, t- take that girl out and put her in. But no, they took me out, put the other white girl in and put another white girl in there. So, so that was definitely a big thing where um racism, that was my first incident of racism. They're like, mm, sorry, we don't want you here. But it's definitely hard. You're going to have little battles like that. Um, depending on where you go, you'll have more exposure to those type of things. But it's hard. Um, it's interesting. You'll definitely learn a lot here. You'll grow a lot as a person. Um, but I think as long as you connect with your family and people you care about, you won't lose yourself here. Like for me, I speak to my mother every day. I may not call every relative, but I make sure I talk to my mother. And if I'm having a bad day, I talk to my mother and she cheers me up. So, um, yeah. What did I say? The, it's, it's interesting. You'll grow here. Mm-hmm. And the final word is, my final phrase is, it will push you to your limits. Not just with like experiences with other people, like racism and stuff like that, but academically also, you will be pushed. You will be pushed because even though gem- people have it to say that the American school system is so easy and whatnot, that is true. However, that stops at high school and elementary school. That will be easy if you're Jamaican going into that. You can manage high school, but university it's rem- it's catering to a wider audience because you have international students, people coming from all over the world to come to this university. So the workload is much much greater. But I have a lot of agents in my class. Them say Asians are really smart, and I know that's not the case for everybody, but for those, you know, the little Indians, the techie people, they do their engineering and their math, 
like I have a lot of them in my classes and sometimes I listen to them talk and I'm like well yeah cool I never know that but you definitely have more competition and sometimes you'll feel like you're not doing enough so it will definitely challenge you yeah okay it will push it that's good nice okay so we've covered a lot of things and I'm so happy that we're able to to give people a better insight on what it is like because people always hear but they never really know the full of what is happening so i'm happy that you came to share your story thank you for inviting me i'm happy to do this